Hey guys, welcome back to part number five of this beautiful kit, Academy's Viper. So we're going to, this part we're going to focus on painting and weathering, and at the very end we're out of decals as well. I'm not going to explain how I put the decals on, I've done it a million times before, but I'll go through any problems with any decals and um, show you kind of how they all go, go down on the kit. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Hey, welcome back to another part of this helicopter build, which is AH-1Z Viper, my first helicopter I've ever built. So, enjoying it, um, but now we get to the phase where I really enjoy, which is a painting phase. So, got this guy built up, ready to go, a lot of glass work. Um, so, the first thing we're going to do is, which is good practice, is we're going to, well, I guess the first thing we'll do is get a good wipe over with a brush to kind of get any dust off it, and then we'll hit all the glass work with the inside of the canopy or kind of, I'm not sure you call it, is it a canopy? I guess it is, um, color, which will be, we're gonna use NATO black. Um, so, see if I've got any right here. NATO black, NATO black, NATO black. It is right here, LP60, for lack of version, or you can get the, um, I think it might be XF62 for the um, acrylic version. So we're at LP90, get all the glass work painted, um, slight variation, and then once we've done that, we'll get onto the priming stage. Right, so we got the NATO black on for the canopy. Also just did a couple of scene lines just to see where we're at. And um, yeah, ready to go for primer. So we can come back with the mist surface of 1500 black. As always, mixed 50-50 with lacquer thinner. So I actually have an old Tamiya jar. I just have it pre-made up, ready to go. Cause I just use this all the time. So pre-made, um, this is just this stuff. Yeah, 1500 black. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray and the whole thing, prime it, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so the primer's down, and as I mentioned um, often in these videos, primer isn't just about getting a base layer for your paint to stick to, it's about also checking um, your seam lines, checking to see how things look before you put paint down. So it looks pretty good. Um, as you can see though, I've had a lot of filler. So I wasn't quite happy with the seam lines down here. Um, they're still visible in quite prominent areas, right here at the front and the top here. I know you can have rotor blades and stuff, but still wasn't quite 100%. And also at the front here, just very thin line. So I went ahead and added a little putty just literally a few seconds ago, so I need to let that dry. And hopefully when I sand that back it's, and then reprime it, it's gonna look good. Um, only other little points here is, I don't, it's still a little tacky, I don't touch it too much. Um, there's a little bit messy around the top here where I super glued the avionics bay, the top top kind of roof of the the um, the bay in there. So it just needs to sand that back a little bit, some like XX super glue, um, both on that side and also here. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it's a little kind of bumpy. So just need to sand that back. But you've got to be very careful with this aircraft because it's all raised detail everywhere. So if I go too crazy in my sanding, I'm going to blow right detail. It's going to look even worse. So I've got to be a little careful. Um, I'm just kind of gently to take these um, Super, excess super glue parts out. Um, fortunately, these parts here, there's no, there's not much detail, you know, where the seam lines are, so we can sand those out pretty confidently. So, yeah, I'm gonna let this dry for a couple, good couple of hours or so. I use the um, Tamiya putty, which I really like. Um, so I'll sand those back, and then we'll shoot the primer again, and hopefully we'll look, 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 look a lot better. It's hard, it's hard for me to say. Um, obviously, got to paint this bit back here. This is where I held it. So I've got a few other little areas where I just need to touch up too. So um, yeah, back later on, and I'll show you where I'm at. Okay, so we painted, no problem at all, painted light ghost gray. And you see I've masked it up. So pretty straightforward and masking really. So it's just the masking tape going down um, for the spine. Um, we'll paint the tail separately. Um, down the back here of the tail. Then I masked up the front with some masking tape. And then just used my clever putty to kind of get a jagged kind of rough kind of line on that side. Oh, knocking the camera. And um, this side. So it doesn't, it doesn't have to be super neat. So just basically, um, again, using Clever Putty, which is my go-to for camo, I love this stuff. Um, don't leave it on long that stuff levels. So soon, like literally a couple minutes after you sprayed it, I just take it off, because um, it can mess it up. So don't leave it on too long. So Clever Putty, um, same as Panzer Putty, which is basically the same thing. I just rebranded it, AK or Mega, whatever it is. Um, but Amazon, I think it's like $10, $15. Um, yeah, and it works great. Just self levels, it's just this putty stuff. So it just basically just sits all stretchy. So you just stretch it out to like a long kind of line. And then I just kind of just placed it along the side um, in a kind of higgledy piggledy kind of line. So we're just gonna spray the top with the dark ghost gray. You see again, see it's got some, look, get that kind of, um, 
uneven kind of line, and then that was a nice line back there with the tape. So, Dark Ghost Grey, MRP 97 for this one. Um, well Love Bottle, as I mentioned before these schemes, um, you always use way more light ghost grey when you do dark ghost grey. Maybe like four to one maybe. So this lasts a lot longer because you think about the aircraft, most of the underside and lower is going to be light in navy schemes, modern navy schemes or marines. Um, dark ghost greys are normally just the top so you can use a lot less. Um, but yeah, I think we're okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead now and just quickly spray all this. Um, we'll remove the putty and then we'll mask up for the, once it's dry, we'll mask up for the black tail and um, also need to paint these avionics um, base too. Okay, so I put some uh, filler on, sanded it down, all good, and she um, so sprayed it all black, uh, but obviously now I'll come on with the shadow coat, the messy kind of coat, which is using my Game Air 72701 Dead White. Um, any kind of Vallejo white which should work. I like this because it's thick, so it covers the black really well. Um, straight out the, the thing, squirt straight in my airbrush, um, no thinning at all. Um, so what I do is I just come and hit the center of the panels in the kind of random, kind of messy way all over, and it creates a nice kind of appreciating kind of um, effect. So there you go. So that's as easy as that. Just no methods of madness, just spray it randomly. Um, hit the center panels, lighter and darker, and just kind of just break up that, that block of black and um, create some um, total differences. Cool, so there we go, so this dries pretty quickly. Um, next up will be to do the, well let me bring you in my color chart so you can kind of see what we've got going on here. So we're going to go, go to scheme I think with a black tail and um, the light goes gray and a dark gray on top. So we're going to go ahead firstly and um, paint the lower side light ghost gray. And once that's dry, um, we'll mask it off and then we'll paint the other parts, um, the other colors afterwards. So light ghost gray. This time around, um, I've got a couple of these guys. I won't need this much, but um, I've got Mr. Color 308, which is lacquer. I do have the Mr. the uh, the Aqueous 308, which is um, like a lacquer um, synthetic. I'm sorry, not lacquer. It's some like an alcohol um, acrylic synthetic kind of thing. Um, the Aqueous is okay, but I, I like lacquer better. So I got lacquer. Um, this is a pretty good color been using the LP37 from Tamiya recently, but that light ghost gray seems way too blue. Um, I think this is a better color. So um, yeah, got a couple of these. I shouldn't take too much paint just because this guy's super skinny. Um, just do the underneath side. So we'll come back with 308. I'll mix this um, with um, lacquer thinner, about 50-50, and um, we'll go from there. So I don't bother showing you me spraying. I think it's boring me just spraying paint. Um, to be honest with you, I'll just go ahead and spray it and show you guys. There's plenty of paint tutorial videos online. Um, yeah, I've done plenty in the past too. So I'm just going to head and just spray this down. Um, low air pressure, lack of paint. Um, and then we'll be back and we'll talk about masking the next color. All painted light ghost gray. And you see I've masked it up. So pretty straightforward and masking really. So just the masking tape going down um, for the spine. Um, we'll paint the tail separately. Um, down the back here with the tail. Then I masked up the front with some masking tape. And then just used my clever putty to kind of get a jagged kind of rough kind of line on that side. Oh, knocking the camera. And um, this side. So it doesn't, it doesn't have to be super neat. So just basically, um, again, using Clever Putty, which is my go-to for camo. I love this stuff. Um, don't leave it on long that self levels. So soon, like literally a couple minutes after you sprayed it, I just take it off because um, it can mess it up. So don't leave it on too long. So Clever Putty, um, same as Panzer Putty, which is basically the same thing. They just rebranded it, AK or Mega, whatever it is. Um, but Amazon, I think it's like $10, $15. Um, yeah, it works great. Just self levels, it's just this putty stuff. So you just basically just sit so stretchy. So you just stretch it out to like a long kind of line. And then I just kind of just placed it along the side um, in a kind of higgledy piggledy kind of line. So we're just going to spray the top with the dark ghost gray. You see again, see it's got some look at get that kind of. Um, uneven kind of line, and then that was a nice line back there with the tape. So, Dark Ghost Grey, MRP 97 for this one. Um, well Love Bottle, as I mentioned before these schemes, um, you always use way more Light Ghost Grey when you do Dark Ghost Grey. Maybe like four to one maybe, so this lasts a lot longer, because you think about the aircraft, most of the underside and lower is going to be light in Navy schemes, modern Navy schemes or Marines. Um, dark Ghost Greys are normally just the top, so you can use a lot less. Um, but yeah, I think we're okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead now and just quickly spray all this. Um, we'll remove the putty and then we'll mask up for the, once it's dry, we'll mask up for the black tail. And um, also we need to paint these avionics um, base too. 
Right, so we just painted it, um, literally just clean my airbrush, and it's still wet. Well, this dress dry super quick. So all we're gonna do now is with this clever putty stuff, just grab the end, boom, done. Easy as that. Um, I'm gonna leave the tape on for a little bit longer, um, just to let it dry a little bit more, but you can see like, how it kind of creates the two color tones. Super easy to use, I love this stuff. Um, should mention too is, when I put the light ghost gray on, the importance of, um, having plastic gnats down um, under your spray booth and your working area. So you can't see it right now, obviously, because where the camera is, but um, I got, went to Home Depot and got stuff you get like, um, it's like clear plastic kind of runners for um, kind of carpet. So when it's, it's only about a couple of bucks a foot. So I've got bought like six foot of it. And it's kind of ones you like put in hallways and that kind of stuff where it protects the carpet. There's like kind of plastic runners with like the knobbly bits underneath. That kind of makes sense. So super cheap. Um, so I have one running under my spray booth across under my bench. Um, so well, two things. Firstly, it's great for catching kind of um, stuff you drop on the floor, like the carpet monster. I do have carpet down where I am. And secondly, against spills too. So. Um, I literally loaded my airbrush up with Light Ghost Grey a couple of colors back and um, I was about to get going and my airbrush fell off its thing onto the floor and emptied the whole color, contents of the color cup onto the floor. Um, luckily again I had that plastic, this plastic runner down so it just went straight on there and just wiped up no problem at all. Um, had I not had that it would have gone on the carpet and being a lack of paint and stuff it would have been a pretty much of a nightmare to get out. So again just top tip. Um, these plastic, either a rug or some plastic or whatever, just down under your work area, um, saves a lot of problems and stuff. So anyway, so light goes grays down. This is gonna dry super quick, being um, MRP lacquer. Um, once that's done, this is dry. We'll mask up and we'll paint the tail black, and then we'll start painting the avionics base. We'll mask those up and paint them XF4, which is kind of like the zinc chromate kind of um, mustardy yellow kind of color. All right, so let me catch up speed where I've been up to. So. Masked up, super easy, just to mark the square around and sprayed the um, avionics bay with the XF4, which is a good color, um, and sprayed the same on the other side, the ammo bay. Got in there and sprayed all around the edges. So basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hand paint all these boxes black and all the cape wires and stuff in various colors. So that, that XF4 gives us the base, and like I say, we just hand paint all the, um, boxes and components and stuff in there on and on this side too um, we'll do the same so that's done um, tail masked off and painted with rubber black which is going to be xf85 or lp85 so xf is going to be the acrylic lp85 is going to be the um, lacquer version so that's the acrylic this is the lacquer lp 60, I actually use lacquer for this one. Um, mate, this this jar's empty to be honest with you, um, so that's why I use the lacquer one. Um, so painted that um, tail. Also back here we painted the this guy, the exhaust, and these right here. So what I did was with this, looking at the pictures, there's a very thin kind of line around this as you can see on the edge. So I just took my um, white Tamiya curve tape and just really, really easy, just wrapped it around each one. Um, and left like you know maybe half a mil or a millimeter just a gap um, to get around the edges um, on each side see around, around gives you a little bit there so this worked great um, love this tape a lot of people don't like it I don't know why I, I love this stuff so um, mastered off and then back filled it with some masking tape and stuff um, so sprayed the inside and this little guy right here with um, an intake exhaust metal color so I use MRP um, which is this is 148 exhaust metal you could use um, Alcad, a really good one. Um, basically, intake, sorry, intake. Um, the um, burner cans, basically, for modern jets, that kind of color is what I went for. So, exhaust metal is what I used. Uh, and it's very thin. And so, I sprayed that. And then you can see around the edge here, I got this stuff, which is exhaust soot for ML MLP 180. So, this stuff is very thin. As you can see, it's almost like a filter or a wash rub and a paint. Um, so it's not, yeah, so what I did, I just sprayed the insides and then lightly kind of misted some on around the edges and around the back of the tail here. So it gives a little bit of weathering there, gives you kind of the effect of some kind of, you know, obviously, Poe po says he exhausts it. So it gives you exhaust it kind of like look um, and grime. So I sprayed all around the back and down here just a little bit, just lightly, you know, some hose and stuff on, just missed it. Um, and that's pretty much got me up to speed. Um, also, I should mention, the, this is from the aftermarket, because the aftermarket, um, Avionics base from Legend. These are the doors. So I had the XF4 um, in my um, 
gun, I sprayed the inside of these two, so, oh, dropping it. So we also got to paint the other side, um, the light goes gray, but these will be um, on the side and these will be open, like that position with some brackets and stuff. That's basically how it will be. So very cool, so that's done. Um, we're almost done with the main painting. I just realized this one other thing, look at some reference pictures, which we haven't done. Um, and that is this area right here where the rotor blade goes. The it should be a darker color. I'm looking here. I think it's when this slots in, it's going to fill most of the gap. But I just want like to make sure there's no kind of gray paint underneath. So I'm just going to take a really dark metallic paint, um, like a gum metal or something. I have to see what I got. Um, but it looks like a really dark metallic. And then using my circle template here, it looks like this is a good size. Simply just hold this on top and just spray in the inside. Um, and that is it. Um, also, I forgot to mention, also, this is, um, if you haven't checked my earlier parts, this is the aftermarket TSS turret from Flying Devil X. Um, so, spray all the main color. And so, those cameras, these two cameras right here, these to be painted black. So, when I paint this, I'll hand paint those two too. Um, and then the rest of that will get done at the very end. So, we're going to head weather this, clear coat it, do everything. And then at the very end, um, we've got that holographic tape comes in the kit to go on that there and then using my Mod Podge again I mentioned this in earlier parts this is a recap but my super clear brilliant extreme Mod Podge um, dries like glass so these two here you get no lenses in the kit so for these two gaps I'll put some of that Mod Podge in there at the very very end and then when it dries it will look like sparkling kind of glass basically um, but that's the very last thing we'll do so yeah we're taking making good strides and good, good progress on this um, yeah, once it goes together, it's looking pretty good. There's tons of raised detail and stuff, so I'm interested to see how it goes with the wash and stuff later, but it should be okay. So let me go ahead and uh, paint this a little bit in here, like I say, a dark metallic color of some sort, and then, um, yeah, we we'll, should be good shape to get a clear coat on this and ready for decals. Okay, so go ahead and hand paint it the avionics bay and the ammo bay. What else? Also painted a little black parts on the front of the TSS turret. So that's all done and I've gone ahead and clear coated everything with LP9 and gloss clear coat just to kind of protect the paint work and kind of get ready for um, decals. So I did that. Um, also look at some reference pics. Um, what I did with these, these doors actually open downwards so they kind of open like this. It looks like they have like some kind of an anti-slip or maybe some kind of step. People are standing on them, that kind of stuff. So yeah, it looks like a gray color. So I used um, German Grey, is it German Grey? Uh, yeah, German Grey XF63. Uh, there we are. So what I did was I actually masked real easily. I just took some of this masking tape and kind of created a template like this and just kind of stuck it round and um, round the edge, just sprayed it, took it off and actually with the nice the XF4, like that mustardy kind of color, looks kind of pops, kind of looks a really nice kind of contrast there. So the other side's gonna be painted obviously with the aircraft color and um, yeah, they can go like this kind of thing. But they're closed, they're obviously gonna be open. Um, one thing to notice on this one, we're gonna go with the shark's mouth which actually goes over the bay doors. So before we, when we pull taking that decal, we've got to mark it up and cut it um, before we soften it. So we can make sure, you know, we have different parts. We have a part for the door um, where it stops here. And then the rest of the decal will actually be stuck to the door once it's obviously painted. Um, so something you need to watch for in a minute when we do the decals. I'm not going to talk about how we do decals. I've done it many times before. I have tons of videos and feel like I'm repeating myself. So go back, check any of my own build videos, such as the um, F16, 36 scale Tamiya kit, the M, 30 second scale MiG-29, um, what else good ones, um, F-14, Tamiya, um, all those kind of ones have dedicated videos just on decals, um, just go to my channel search decals, I've literally probably 10 videos about it, so I'm just going to go ahead and start putting these decals on per what I always do, um, so on set and the usual stuff, and if any problems and stuff I'll report back and um, I'll let you know how I'm getting on, so let me go ahead now, um, let's like say clear coats on, so I'm going to go ahead and decal, um, and put not too many, but I'll go ahead and follow the instructions here, you know, this scheme here, and start putting all these decals on. Okay, so I'm working on the decals. I got the main ones on, no problem at all. They're cartographed, go down beautifully. And um, just one little thing of um, so micro sole. And these guys bedding down beautifully. So you can kind of really see kind of the rivets kind of really coming through. Um, looks like it's painted on. And um, yeah, so I did the main ones. I got all the little stencils left to do. Um, so I, I paused to kind of show you the, the shark's mouth, which is pretty complicated. It's about 
eight decals maybe to make it up. Plus we've got the added confusion of taking cutting this bad boy out on each side. So it makes it a little bit more tricky. So what I did was, um, as you can see on this side, the shark's mouth's on, and then it's on here too, because this door obviously fits here. Like, I'll sorry, my hands in the way, like that, see? And then when the door, the door's gonna be open like this. So how I got around that was, I found the easiest way was just kind of, I put this kind of place, these doors with a blue tack, just hold them in place. And um, so this um, side right here, I've cut it out. So what I'll do is I'll put the decal on and it conforms around, I'll put it over it into the right spot. And then with a very sharp knife, um, I got a brand new blade on this one. I'm just gonna, I just, with the other side, I just ran down the, um, the seam right there and cut through the decal and cut round it. Um, and that was so it kind of split it up, and that kind of seemed to work okay. The decal's pretty good, didn't kind of get destroyed or anything, as you can see here, went down quite nicely on the door. So that was the way it go. I mean, you got a piece at the bottom and a piece at the top to add on afterwards. So, yeah, just it's a little bit complicated, but again, that's the way I did it. Um, it's not perfect, but again, see how it kind of goes on there, and that's the way it is. So, yeah, so I laid it down and just with a knife, just round down and cut it basically. This part here was a little kind of complicated, oh, dropping it. Part of the mouth here too. You got to put the piece in the middle, and then wrap this around the side. I'm not. Sure, I'm pretty sure I got it right around the white at the top. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure, but um, this is where the gun goes. Obviously, there's a little blue tack in the middle. So do it separately. Um, don't glue it in, and then when it slots into place at the end, you can see it will mix the mouth up pretty much like that. See how it kind of all blends and stuff. Um, cool. So I'll leave that off. So I can do the other side. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, yeah, a little tricky. If you guys have done the resin um, avionic sets, up, it's a little bit easier. You don't have a hole here. You just put the decal on. You're good to go. But again, with these doors, you kind of got to split the decal up a little bit um, to make it work. It's cool. So yeah, again, looking really good. Um, so I went with this one in the end. I think I told you guys this kind of one about skull and it's like eight cards and stuff. Um, so again, yeah, kind of like this. Um, one so yeah really good so no problem at all so let me go ahead um i'm gonna do this other side it took me about 20 minutes so i'll make sure i take my time and do this shark's mouth on the other side um same way and then i got tons of little stencils and stuff to go on here okay so gonna put decals on got the main ones on looking really good went down beautifully color graph um really nice just quick go of the um micro sole and it really conformed it down. One, one um, quick blast of this, and it's all got. You can see all the rapid detail for it, and it looks really good. Um, so very nice. Um, put the main ones on. Got all the stencils left to do, and um, yeah, no big issues at all. Um, oh, knocking stuff over. So the front bit with the shark's mouth is a lot complicated. There's probably about eight, nine decals make it up. Plus the fact that we cut this out because we've got the aftermarket. There's a little bit extra stuff that needs to be done. So first of all, did this front bit, it's easy to do it separately, well, you have to do it separately. So don't glue it in. Um, you put this little piece in the middle and then this wraps around it. I think the white goes on the top, um, but I'm not 100% sure. It seems to fit that way. And um, again, a micro sole, it bed it down nicely. So did that kind of the, um, the gun turret goes in the middle, the kind of shark's mouth. Um, then you got a piece that goes around here and um, a couple of pieces, small pieces on top and bottom. So what I did was I took my doors, which is obviously the aftermarket. If you're building straight out of the box, you don't have to worry about this. Um, and I used a little blue tack, I held it in place. So on the other side, you can kind of see there, just kind of held it in place loosely. Um, so I held it in place, then I put the decal down over it, and then with a knife, a sharp, um, brand new blade, just cut down it and um, separated it so I could keep it separate on this, um, like that. So again, if you're not, Using these avionics, but you don't have to worry about it so much. It's just one decal that goes down, um, but it would be open like that on um, the door. But we do have the, obviously the decal on the other side. Again, went down beautifully. You can see all the little raised details and rivets through there. Um, no problem at all. So, what I'm going to do now is attempt live to kind of do the other side, kind of show you. So, what I'm going to do first is get some micro sets, which is the first one. Um, really kind of helps it from sticking. Gives it a little bit of wiggle room, helps it stop sticking down right away, so we can manipulate this a little bit better. Um, this one smells like vinegar. I mean, you see I've blue tapped my door, kind of roughly and kind of in place here. So I'm just gonna put plenty of this stuff on, where it's gonna, decals are gonna go. Ok, 
Okay, man. My decal, I, before I started filming this, I dipped it in some water, so it's been just basking in the um, on my mat there for a few seconds, so it's easy to conform. Um, sorry, it's, it would move off the paper, no problem, ready to go. So just go ahead and take this and um, kind of line it up and loosely kind of place it. Then kind of drops into place nicely. So it kind of, that's kind of goes like that. So if you obviously don't, like I mentioned before, if you don't have this cut out, it's off straight, easy, easy to do. But because I got cut out, um, now I'm just going to go ahead and cut the decal carefully with my very sharp knife. Uh, I'm gonna move this around. So I'm just gonna kinda kinda hold it in place with my finger and then follow. <clears throat> okay. Then I'm gonna take the door off. And just stuck in with blue tack, a white tack, and come back and make sure this guy's lined up still. Okay. And on this side, what I'm gonna do too is you see there's a little bit underneath the door. Okay, I'm just gonna cut that off. Yeah, very sharp knife, so it's not destroying a decal or anything. And then, which way that way around? Then this bit we cut off is going to go below. So this is going to go right. Oh. It goes in like that. This is a little bit messy around the edges, but once this thing gets bed down and some soul and set, it's going to wrap it around it. It's going to be no problem at all. So that's kind of that side done. And then if we kind of hold it loosely against, again, it's, make sure it kind of fits. Cool. And again, this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because um, the door's going to be open. It's going to be fixed open, so it's not going to be. Um, right next next up to it so again we're good so now we have um, another little part that goes up here and a part that goes down here um, for the um, for, for the mouth um, sharp mouth so I'm gonna go ahead and where are we at see these two little pieces right here oh here we are here and here so I'm gonna cut those out and put those on and then once they're on that's gonna complete the, um, the whole shape of the mouth so a little bit kind of tricky this one um, again because we're just using some aftermarket stuff but um, yeah hope you kind of found that one not helpful. So let me go ahead and do, finish this off off camera and do the rest of the stencils. All right, so I finished the decals. Um, tons, actually. I didn't realize there's so many stencils going on this, but you're not really gonna see them. The problem is they're gray on gray, so you kind of see there, it's, they're not the easiest to kind of see. Um, but yeah, went down no problem at all with the, card, with the um, being cartograph. Um, now I did, you see there's a lot of some shiny stuff going on here. I did make a mistake, so. I, as you know, um, I kind of had to pause this build for about a month because I was waiting for Flying Eleven X to send me the um, the turret at the front here. Let's go right here. Um, so I totally forgot in that that um, assembly that there's a bunch of photo etch on this. So you got a whole fret of grills and stuff, which are very nice, including the kit, which is not bad because again, this kit is only about thirty five, forty dollars. I think I don't think it's very expensive. Um, so I actually noticed it while I was going for a stencil on here. All the stencils. I noticed that there's this page just dedicated to where the photo etch goes. I thought, oh crap! So I wasn't going to do it, and I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to do it. So I think it's going to be so retroactively. I've gone ahead and done this side, and it certainly does make a difference. Um, obviously, it's, you know, photo etch color right now, but you can see, you know, some there and all over, and some on the tail. Um, 
So I think you can get away with this. So I've glued them on. Um, my favorite right now is using this um, thin blend of Gator Grip. I kind of really like this PVA glue. Um, it's basically just PVA glue watered down, I think, but it um, works pretty good. Um, so all these guys are on this side. I've still got the other side to do and some on the top. See, I've done one already and there's a ton on the bottom um, the various places. So I think I get away with this because I'm looking where it's located. It's not around any major decals and stuff. And what I can do is, um, I think if I just get a piece of paper or something, I can just kind of hold it like that, protect you know, protect all these stuff and just quickly spray over it. Um, so I think I'm good to go just because I've glue all these on and then once they're all dry, I'm going to just spray them over. And same here, I just hold the paper over to cover the decals and spray back here black so it all blends it. Oh, I'll put some camera there. Hold it up and then spray it. So I think if I can mask it and just hold some paper over to cover any decals and stuff, I think I'll be okay. So again, you know, it definitely makes a difference. You can see on this side, you know, all the grills and stuff. And also this side is just blank gaps. I haven't done them yet. So a lot of photo etch work going on. Um, but yeah, so I'll get all these put on and um, yeah, my bad. So if you're building this one again, I do this, the whole point of me doing these YouTube videos and stuff, I think about building it, you can kind of pick up some mistakes I do and don't make my mistakes. So yeah, don't make my mistake and forget the photo etch. It's, it's not really in the um, instructions. So if you're following for a building, you don't see it. It's in the second thing with the, uh, the markings and the, um, the color call outs and stuff, which, is, which threw me off. Um, so yeah, don't forget about this page and um, yeah, there's a good whole fret fault here of um, photo etch that needs to be done. So let me go ahead and um, finish doing all this photo etch. And then when I'm done, I'll quick spray it, you know, spray it in, blend it all into the paintwork. And then we'll come back and I'll kind of show you where I'm at. Right, so all the PEs put on, no problem at all. Um, a lot of it, probably about 20 pieces. So I'm glad I added it on. Um, and you can see, add it all on. And um, what I did was... I start with the top, such as the dark ghost gray. So I brought my MRP dark ghost gray, same as what I painted this, um, you know, the rest of the aircraft in, and just sprayed it, touched it up. And then I thought, you know, it adds kind of like a little bit of visual interest. So all the other ones I sprayed with um, dark ghost gray too, so even on the lighter color. And it just makes it kind of like, maybe a little bit, you can kind of see, especially on this one, how it's a little bit kind of colors loaded off and it kind of looks a little bit stained, which is perfect because it's obviously all like vents and exhaust and um, that kind of stuff. So I, I kind of, so I used dark ghost gray for every single bit of photo etch on this. Obviously the black the back here, I carefully kind of painted that black um, to match the tail. Oh, I can't keep off camera, I'm sorry. Black off cap, um, tail, but yeah, like the rest, just dark ghost gray, had my MRP, nice and thin paint. So just sprayed over all the um, photo etch everywhere, all over this thing. And um, see the back here, I re -grind back up again, made it grimy using my MRP exhaust soot again, just sprayed a little bit. Um, it's more like a wash, like I mentioned a few minutes ago. So I just sprayed around the back here um, over the freshly painted and a little bit more over some of the decals and stuff to get that kind of a little bit of first stage weathering kind of grimy look at the back here. Um, and that is it. We're done with the painting and decals. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to get everything a clear coat again just to seal all those decals in to get ready for weathering. Um, so I get another LP9 clear coat. Um, and then we'll come back next week and start the weathering. So it's a bit of a challenge. This one is not really panel lines. It's more kind of raised detail. So we might do something a little bit different on this one. So, yep. Thanks for watching. Have a great week and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.